Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and I hope you guys are ready to talk about some backpacking gear. So you may have noticed in my last couple trip videos that I'm actually in the process of trying out a new backpack. Typically when I go on a trip, I'm going to be bringing with me this Gregory Stout 65 liter pack. This has been with me since day one. I absolutely love this pack. I still plan on using it. But going in with the theme that I've really been trying to focus on this past year, and that's lowering my base weight. Back in October, I purchased a new pack that's actually about half the weight of this Gregory Stout bag that I typically bring with me. Now, I've taken this new bag with me on about four different trips now, and I thought it was finally time that I provided my feedback and thoughts over all of this new pack and what I think on it so far. So let's get started. The backpack that I've been using recently and plan on using throughout the 2021 backpacking season is the ULA Circuit. I've been very pleased with this backpack so far and I've actually really enjoyed testing and trying out a new backpack in the backcountry. When I purchased my first backpack, I didn't do a ton of research. I think at the time price was the major deciding factor that led me to purchase the Gregory Stout. But this time around I did a ton of research on this backpack. I posted in Facebook groups and on subreddits just asking about all the different types of lightweight and ultralight backpacks and it ended up boiling down to the Gossamer Gear Mariposa or the ULA Circuit. Now before I break down some of my likes and dislikes with this pack, let's go through some of the statistics and features about this pack first. So the ULA Circuit is an internal frame pack which is made of a carbon fiber and Delrin suspension hoop system with a single aluminum stay running down the middle of the pack. You will notice this is a roll top bag so there's no lid or brain here at the top. You pretty much just put all your gear in the main compartment, roll it closed and then you'll clip it on each side and you're ready to go. The fabric itself used to make this backpack, it's made of a 400 aerobic fabric or ripstop nylon. It's a very, very durable fabric. You're not going to have to worry about this catching on anything out in the backcountry and ripping your pack. Now according to ULA's website, this pack currently goes for $255 and the medium torso length version comes in at 41 ounces or 2.5 pounds. Now you can actually shed a couple ounces from the pack's weight, but I'll touch more on that later in this video. Now as for the features, on the front of the pack here you'll notice that there's a very large mesh pocket and it has an elastic rope here on the front that you, you can use to cinch down anything that you have inside this pocket. You have hoops on each side that can be used to strap ice axes or trekking poles to your pack. And on the sides here, they have very large water bottle holders. And when I say very large, I mean very large. I've been able to fit a Nalgene and other items in here all at the same time. These are by far the biggest water bottle holders I've seen on a backpack. Now onto the back here, on the shoulder straps themselves, you have actually two on each side water bottle holders. Pretty much just a loop here with a, um, a locking mechanism here that you can just cinch it tight. And you can actually have your water bottle right here, easily accessible right on your shoulder strap, which is a really nice feature. The hip belts, they have a pocket on each side, so you have two hip belt pockets. These are pretty big pockets. I've been able to fit you know, an iPhone 11 in here with room to spare. So they're nice and big pockets and you have two of them. So that's pretty much it for the stats and features for this pack. Let's go on to some of the likes and dislikes I have on this backpack so far. Some of the things I really love about this backpack are the durability. That 400 aerobic fabric that pretty much runs all throughout this backpack here is going to do a great job of preventing your backpack from getting punctured by any thorn bushes or sticks. It's going to do a great job of preventing major scratches from dragging it on rocks or any hard ground. I've read quite a few reviews from people who have through hiked the PCT and AT that have used this pack and they said that the durability was one of the best features about this pack. It's pretty much bomb proof and a lot of them said they still used it after their through hike which is pretty impressive. So another thing I love about this backpack is the packability and the ease of use. This main compartment here is absolutely massive and in total this pack is a 68 liter bag. 
I will go ahead and put in the breakdown of each one of the pockets and the volume capacity that it has. But again, this main compartment is huge. If I wanted to, I could probably pack pretty much all of my backpacking gear for a given trip right in this main compartment without needing anything else. Now, in terms of ease of use, there's really not much to this bag. You know, you got the, the side pockets on each side, the hip pockets on the hip belt, the front mesh pocket here, and the main compartment. There's really not much to it. And what's really nice about that, at least for me personally, is when I'm at camp, I never really find myself digging around my pack, going through all my pockets, trying to figure out where I put my headlamp. With my Gregory, that has been an issue in the past. It has more pockets, so it's a little bit more difficult to try and find things when I'm at camp. So overall, again, some of the things I really like about this, the ease of use and the packability. Another nice thing about the backpack is that it's highly adjustable and it's actually modular. There's a couple components that come with the backpack that you can remove if you want to shed a couple ounces from the backpack's weight. So first and foremost is the hydration sleeve inside the backpack. If you're somebody who uses a bladder or a camelback, that's probably something you're going to want to have in there. For me personally, I usually just use smart water bottles on the side pockets here. So I went ahead and removed that sleeve. Inside the backpack is also a stash pocket. I use it for important items like my wallet or keys, but right now what I have in there is my first aid kit. It's nice and easy to get access to that pocket in the event that I run into an emergency. Now onto the back of the backpack here. I talked earlier about the water bottle loops that are on here. I've kept these on here. It's a really nice, easy way to get access to my water bottles. I don't have to reach around to the side to grab those. I can just strap them right here to my shoulder strap. Now what is missing is the hand loops. On each shoulder strap, there's actually a loop that can attach in there. It's a nice way to kind of rest your hands in those loops so they're not dangling at your hips all day when you're hiking. Last but not least is the single aluminum stay that's used for added support in the middle of the backpack here that can be removed to shed another couple ounces. One of my favorite features about this pack is the hip belt. So typically on backpacks, the hip belt has a strap on each side of your hip that you can use to tighten down your hip belt. This one actually has two straps on each side, so you can actually really fine tune how you wanna tighten and adjust that hip belt, which is just a really nice feature that I haven't seen on many other packs. Last but not least, when it comes to things I really enjoy about this backpack is the large mesh pocket here on the outside of the pack. One of the biggest complaints I've had with my Gregory backpack is it didn't have that mesh pocket on the front of the bag. It had a side zippered pocket, and when that backpack was fully loaded with gear, it was really difficult not only getting that zipper closed and opened, but I always struggled finding items in that front pocket. I don't have that issue with this pack. This mesh pocket is really large and I'm actually able to fit a nice amount of gear in here. Typically I'll put in here things I need quick and frequent access to. So I'll put snacks, maybe my lunch, and my water purification system in this mesh pocket. And it's just really easy to get access to them. This elastic compression strap here on the outside does a great job of securing any gear that I put in this pocket. If my backpack were to tip over, I don't have to worry about things falling out of this pocket. This strap does a great job of keeping everything nice and secure to my backpack. So that pretty much wraps it up for things that I really enjoy about this backpack. But let's move on to some things that I'm not a huge fan of next. All right, so overall, I really do enjoy this backpack and I plan on using it as my primary backpack for the foreseeable future, but I do have a couple issues with it that I feel like are worth bringing up. First and foremost are the side pockets. Now I noted earlier that the side pockets are absolutely massive and if you're somebody who plans on stuffing a ton of gear in these side pockets, you're absolutely gonna love it. I could probably fit my tent in this side pocket alone, but for me personally, all I usually put in there are my smart water bottles, and I feel like these pockets are a little bit overkill. I notice that my water bottle tends to slide around a little bit in here, and one of the downfalls with just having that in there is I have to really tighten down this drawstring really tight, and I notice that the locking mechanism here doesn't do a very good job of holding that drawstring in place. So when I get to camp and put my backpack down, it's very common for my water bottles to just slip right out the top and start rolling around the ground. It's pretty common occurrence. This drawstring just doesn't do a great job of keeping those water bottles in there very snug. 
Now another issue I do have with these side pockets is that the shoulder straps themselves actually mount to the backpack through a hole in the side pocket. So if you are somebody who plans on storing a bunch of smaller gear in there like your headlamp and some other smaller items, I highly suggest putting them in either the main compartment or the front mesh pocket here. You don't want any of those items falling on the ground. It could literally fall right out this hole and you may not even notice it. So those are a couple issues that I do have with the side pockets here on this backpack. Another issue that I have with this pack, and I'll say that this is a very minor, minor issue, goes back to the mesh pocket here on the front of the pack. Although I absolutely love this pocket, it's a great way to get quick and easy access to things that you'll need frequently on the trail. I almost feel like this pocket is too big. When I put my gear in this pocket and I've been hiking for a couple hours, I noticed that all the gear kind of sinks towards the bottom of the pocket here and the compression straps here that are used to hold everything in place, they do a great job. They almost do too good of a job. It's really difficult to kind of pull some of these items out once they've sunken down to the bottom of this mesh pocket. And for me, I just feel like the mesh pocket is a little bit too big. I'm sure there's certain circumstances where you're doing an extended trip or a long through hike where having that extra volume and capacity is really nice. But for me personally, for the small weekend trips that I typically do, I just feel like this pocket is a little bit too big for the bag. Another downfall with this backpack is that it doesn't come with a rain cover. Now most major brands out there like Osprey and Gregory, they'll have built-in rain covers that are included when you purchase the backpack. This one though, I actually had to buy the rain cover separately. I got one here for $35. Now this one is made specifically for this model backpack, which is awesome. I know it's going to fit, so I don't have to worry about that. But this was an extra $35 on an already $255 spent. So with other brands out there already having the rain covers included and having spent $255 on this pack, it would be nice if it had the rain cover included. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for this video on the ULA Circuit Backpack. I've really enjoyed this backpack so far and I look forward to taking this with me on some backpacking trips in the future. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you're enjoying the content so far, go ahead and like and subscribe down below. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.